All right, we're in the last video for chapter 12, video 6, and we're going to be looking at stoichiometry involving gases, because we are in the gas chapter, this chapter about properties of gases. So let's review really quickly what the word stoichiometry means. We saw it in previous chapters, it was conversions using balanced chemical equations. Specifically, what stoichiometry dealt with is if you have a balanced chemical equation, A, A plus B, B, yields C, C. And the small letters A, B, and C represent the coefficients of the balanced equation. Um, so the numbers like 1 mole, 2 moles, 3 moles. The mole-to-mole -mole relationships between the quantities of the reagents are used in the stoichiometry of solving problems. If you're given the quantity of one reagent, can you calculate the quantity of another reagent in that balanced chemical equation? Remember that when you do stoichiometry problems to solve the quantity of one reagent from the quantity of another, the unit you always have to go through is the mole. So the mole is the central unit of conversions of chemical compounds in chemistry. So are you always given the quantity of one substance in a mole so that you can calculate the another quantity of the substance in the mole? No, you're not always given the mole as the quantity, and you're not always asked to calculate a mole. So this is why we've been studying these conversion factors. We have to find whatever unit we're given, a way to convert that into a mole so that we could do a mole-to-mole -mole conversion using a mole ratio conversion factor. And then if we needed to, we could convert out of the mole using another conversion factor. So let's just review really quickly some of the conversion factors we've talked about so far. If you're given grams of a substance, let's say A, and you're asked to calculate something of B, some quantity of B. If you're given grams of a substance, in order to do the, the stoichiometry, you have to convert grams to moles. And anytime you want to convert grams to moles, you always have to use molar mass. Molar mass, the units are grams per mole, so it converts into and out of the mole. Likewise, if you calculate a mole and you want to get to mass, you can also use molar mass, right? <clears throat> to go from moles to grams. So molar mass goes from grams to moles or moles to grams. The other conversion factor that we've looked at so far is Avogadro's number. Remember that Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything, is, is the number that represents the quantity of a mole. So if I'm given the actual number of atoms or molecules or formula units of A, and I want to calculate some quantity of B, the first thing I have to do is I have to convert maybe the atoms of A, the number, of atoms or molecules to moles of A. And that's when I use Avogadro's number. It's so many, Avogadro's number of something per mole. Likewise, if I'm calculating the moles of something and then I want to calculate how many atoms or molecules that is, then I can calculate from moles to numbers of a substance also using Avogadro's number. So that's our second um, conversion factor. The third conversion factor that we looked at, and the final one we've looked at for stoichiometry so far, so far, is the mole ratio. Once I've calculated the moles of the first substance given, and I want to calculate to the quantity of the second substance, I always go from mole to mole, using the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation. Those coefficients are called the mole ratio. In some books called this the mole to mole ratio, like moles of A to moles of B or moles of B to moles of A. So we have these three conversion factors that are used to, to solve a stoichiometry problem. Now remember the stoichiometry problems, the basic way that you solve them is if you're given the amount of a quantity and it's not in the mole, then you always calculate into the mole, then you do a mole to the mole, and then you calculate out of the mole. So we had into the mole, mole to the mole, out of the mole. Remember IMO? Calculate into, and then do a mole to mole, and then out of the mole. All right, so if we've already done all of this, why are we studying gas stoichiometry? Well, when it comes to gases, 
There's another convenient way that gases are measured. Gases can be measured not only by the um, grams or the amount of atoms, but oftentimes when chemists measure gases, they measure the volume of a gas at a, set of, a, a certain temperature or a certain pressure. Um, so the volume of the gas is easily, is easily gotten. If we are at STP, standard temperature and pressure of a gas, remember that we always know that one mole of a gas is equal to how many liters? It's equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. So when we're at STP, one mole of any gas equals 22.4 liters of a gas. Notice we have two units in the molar volume quantity. We have moles relating to liters or volume of a gas. Molar volume can be used at STP for of a, ga of a gas to convert liters of a gas to moles. So we have a new conversion factor that can be used at STP. That is molar volume. All right. So now we can calculate from liters to moles or from moles to liters. If we have a gas as one of our quantities or reagents in a balanced chemical equation. So we're going to practice some stoichiometry now. Practice what we've done and build on it with our new conversion factor. Okay, so let's look at the first stoichiometry problem we have here. I, I will remind you, how do I know this is a stoichiometry problem and I haven't read it yet? Well, this is true 90% of the time in this class. But remember what I said previously. Whenever you have a word problem, as we often do in chemistry, and it's accompanied by a balanced chemical equation, usually when you see that combination together, it's a hint that you probably have some sort of stoichiometry to do in the problem, which means converting moles of one reagent to the other. And if you're not given moles, you're going to have to convert into the mole or out of the mole. Um, so this is a stoichiometry problem just by looking at it because we've got a word problem and a balanced chemical equation. So let's read the problem. It says, calculate the number of moles of phosphorus needed to react with 4 liters of hydrogen gas at 273 Kelvin in one atmosphere. Okay. So let's look at what we've got here. It says, calculate the number of moles of phosphorus. So I want to know how many moles of phosphorus I've got. How many moles of phosphorus I need to react with 4 liters of hydrogen gas. So that's given. At 273 Kelvin, so I've got a temperature. In one atmosphere, I've got a pressure. But I want you to look closely here. First of all, we know we've got a stoichiometry problem here. We want to calculate the amount of one reagent from the given quantity of another. We're given the quantity of one reagent, and we're asked to calculate the quantity of another. That's a stoichiometry problem. You have to go through the mole. So I know this is stoichiometry, so I'm probably not going to immediately pull out a gas law unless I need one later. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hmm, I'm given liters of one of my reagents. Is that, is that reagent a gas? We see here that it says 6H2 gas. So the hydrogen we're given is indeed a gas, and we're given the liters of that compound. We know that we can convert liters to moles using molar volume if we're at STP. So the question remains, I don't see anywhere in this problem where it says at STP. However, I am given the temperature and the pressure of the gas. And if you look closely at those, the temperature of the gas is 273 Kelvin. That's standard temperature, zero degrees Celsius. And the pressure is standard pressure, one atmosphere. So we actually are at STP. When we're at STP, we can convert the liters of a gas that's given to the moles of the gas using molar volume, which is 22.4 liters of a gas for every mole of a gas. So that'll be our conversion factor. 
Remember, we're always, whatever we're given for stoichiometry, we convert it into the mole. And that's where we're going to use this conversion. Now we need to do a mole to mole because we need to convert moles of our given compound to moles of our unknown. And here that's what we're asked to do. We're asked to find moles of the phosphorus. So how do we go from moles of one reagent to another? We we'll use the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation. All right, so we just do a mole to mole stoichiometry problem. All right, so let's set it up here. I'm going to erase this. And we're going to solve. Remember when you do stoichiometry, you always start with the quantity given. So we were given 4 liters of hydrogen gas. 4.0 liters of hydrogen gas, H2. And we're going to convert into the mole using molar volume. So I've got a liters of hydrogen on top, so I'm going to put my liters of hydrogen on bottom. And I'm going to put my mole of hydrogen on top. So for every one mole of hydrogen at STP, we know that it takes occupies 22.4 liters of space. So I've got my liters on top, my liters on bottom. Those cancel out. I've converted to moles of hydrogen. Now I'm going to convert. That was going into the mole, so I'm going to do my mole to mole now. So I've got moles of hydrogen on top, so I'm going to put my moles of hydrogen on bottom. I'm converting to moles of phosphorus, so P4 is going on top. And my conversion is for every six moles in my balanced chemical equation, I'm going to erase so you can see here, for every six moles of hydrogen that's used, there's one mole of phosphorus, phosphorus that's used. So I've got my mole of hydrogen on top and bottom. I have calculated at STP using molar volume, I've converted from liters of hydrogen to moles of phosphorus. If you calculate this, it looks like there's two significant figures. I get 0 0.030 moles of P4. Okay, So that's a standard stoichiometry problem. Now that one was pretty simple because we only used two conversion factors. Um, so let's look at another problem here. And let's see if we can do this problem as well. Remember, if we're at STP and we have a gas, we can convert liters of the gas to moles or moles to liters. Okay, the next problem says what volume of oxygen? So we want to know the volume this time. And we're given the balanced chemical equation again. So it says what volume of oxygen? So that means how many liters of oxygen at 760 torr, that's a pressure, and 25 degrees Celsius, that's a temperature. And actually, 25 degrees Celsius is not standard temperature and pressure. Hmm, what are we going to do? Hmm, let's read the rest of the problem and we'll figure it out. Because we're not at STP this time. So we cannot use molar volume to convert liters to moles or moles to liters. So we'll figure this out. It says, what volume of oxygen at 760 torr and 25 degrees Celsius are needed to react completely with 3.2 grams of ethane? So let's write down that 3.2 grams of ethane right underneath it. Okay, so this is a stoichiometry problem again. How do I know it's stoichiometry? I'm given the quantity of one reagent in a balanced equation. I'm asked to calculate the quantity of another. I'm given grams, and I'm asked to calculate liters. What mole, if I'm given one reagent and I need to figure out another, what unit must I always go through? I must always go through the mole. So the strategy here, if I was making a solution map like we did in the beginning of the class, is I need to go from grams of the substance grams of the ethane given, C2H6, to moles of ethane. And once I calculate moles of ethane, I need to convert that to moles of my oxygen. And when I get my moles of oxygen, then I need to convert it to liters. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at the solution map. I need to go into the mole, do a mole to mole, and go out of the mole. So I need to go into to a mole to mole, and I need to go out of the mole. Okay, can I go from grams to moles? 
Yeah, that's using the conversion factor of molar mass. If I'm given the substance C2H6, then I can calculate from grams to moles easily because I know what the molar mass of ethane is using the periodic table. Two carbons, 1224, plus six hydrogens, it's going to be roughly 30. The actual molar mass of this gas, if you calculate it using your periodic table, is 30.08 grams per mole. All right, so that's going to be our conversion factor to go from grams to moles. Then we need to do a mole to mole. We're given in the equation that for every two moles of ethane, C2H6, we need seven moles of oxygen. So that is our mole to mole um, conversion factor that we can use to go mole to mole. Now how are we going to get out of the mole? We said before if we're at STP we can use molar volume to go from moles to liters. However, we're not at STP conditions. So what do we do? Well, we want, we've we're going to be able to calculate a moles of oxygen, so we'll know moles of oxygen. We're given a pressure, we're given a temperature. The only thing that we don't know is the volume of the gas. We're given one set of variable conditions, and this one we're actually going to calculate the moles, but we'll have moles, pressure, temperature, and we need to calculate volume. We have one set of conditions, we can use the ideal gas law. So here's a new, something to remember when you're doing these problems. When you do stoichiometry gas problems, if you cannot convert in or out of the mole to the liter because you're not at STP, your only other choice is to use the ideal gas law. When you're not at STP and you need to convert from moles to liters, you use the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. And that will convert you from moles to volume of a gas at whatever conditions you're at. Okay, so let's do the first part of this problem. The first part of this problem is actually stoichiometry involved. We're given 3.52 grams of ethane. I'm going to use E for ethane because, ET, because um, I'm running out of room here. <laughs> okay, but C2H6 uh, is ethane. So, We've got three grams of ethane. I need to convert that to moles. We said we were going to use molar mass. That's how you convert in and out of the mole. So we've got 30.08 grams of ethane for every one mole of ethane. That's our molar mass. So we're converting grams to moles. Now we are into moles of ethane. We want to convert to moles of oxygen. So we said we were going to use the mole ratio. In the balanced chemical equation, for every two moles of ethane, we require seven moles of oxygen, O2. So I've got a mole of ethane on top, mole of ethane on bottom. Now I've converted to moles of oxygen. I'm going to go ahead and solve here because I cannot use the molar mass, or sorry, molar volume to convert that to liters. I need the ideal gas law. So I'm going to solve for moles of oxygen. If you calculate this, I get 0 0.37 moles of oxygen. I want liters of oxygen. So I'm going to use this number, I'm going to use the quantities given, and I'm going to continue to solve. So let me use my eraser here. I'm going to erase everything here so that I have room to work. <clears throat> so we're we are given 0.37, or we actually we solve for 0.37 moles of oxygen. We want to convert that to liters of oxygen. And we're given pressure and we're given temperature. So we've got PV equals NRT, our ideal gas law. We want to solve for volume, so I'm going to divide the size by pressure. Okay, So volume will equal NRT over P. Volume equals nRT over P. Okay, so our moles, we're just going to substitute in because that's what we solved for, for oxygen. We've got 0.37 moles of oxygen needed. 
R is our gas constant, is always the same, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole. And our temperature is going to be in what? It's going to always be in Kelvin. So the temperature in the problem is 25 degrees Celsius. So we're going to add 273 to that. Okay. Um, so when we add 273 to 25, we get 298. So I get 298 Kelvin. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by the pressure. The pressure in the problem is 760 torr. 760 torr is 1.00 atm atmospheres. All right, so we're going to solve here. We've got a mole on top, a mole on bottom. We've got a Kelvin on bottom, a Kelvin on top. Atmosphere divided by atmosphere. So we're going to be left with liters, which is what we want because volume should be in liters. So I've got 0.37 times 0 0.0821 times 298, all divided by 1. I get 9.1 liters. 9.1 liters. Okay, so that's the volume of the gas, the oxygen that's needed. Once again, to recap, in the first problem, we were at STP. So when we wanted to convert moles to liters or liters to moles, and the gas is at STP, we can use molar volume as a conversion factor, 22.4 moles per liter. Okay, second problem. We were not at STP, so we couldn't use molar volume as a conversion factor. In order to go from moles to volume or volume to moles, when you're not at pressure and temperature conditions that are STP, you have to use the ideal gas law, all right? Okay. All right, I'm gonna put the ball in your court now. Um, I'm not going to solve this problem, but I'm going to give you the answer as kind of a challenge to see if you've understood what we've been talking about with gas stoichiometry. So let's read the problem. I'll kind of walk you through the initial setup verbally, and then I'll tell you the answer, and I'll challenge you to solve for it. It says, how many moles of oxygen gas are used up during a reaction with 18.0 liters of methane gas measured at STP? Okay, now, we've got a word problem. It's accompanied by a balanced chemical equation here. So let's just map out what we're given on the chemical equation. It says, how many moles of oxygen gas? So we want to know how many moles of oxygen there are that are going to react with 18 liters of methane gas. So we've got 18.0 liters of methane given. And we are at... STP. So let's look at what we're given here. We're given the quantity of one reagent in a balanced chemical equation. We're asked to calculate the quantity of another reagent. What unit must we always go through? The mole. Notice we're not given the moles of methane, we're given liters of methane. We need to convert liters of methane to moles of methane before we can convert to moles of the other starting material, the oxygen. We're at STP, so do we need to use the ideal gas equation, or can we use molar volume? We're going to use molar volume, 22.4 liters per mole. And I'm going to ask you to set it up. Hopefully the answer that you get is 1.61 moles of oxygen. All right, so see if you can get that. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the last type of stoichiometry problem. And it's a specialized type of stoichiometry problem called a volume-volume calculation. If you have a chemical equation, a balanced chemical equation, and you're given the volume of one gas, let's say you're given liters of one gas, and you're asked to calculate liters of another gas. So you're going from volume of one gas to volume of another gas. What we're going to do is we're going to do something called a volume-volume conversion factor for stoichiometry. We're going to assume that when you're converting from volume of one gas to volume of another gas, that temperature and pressure are going to be held constant. So for these problems, we're just going to assume you'll be given one temperature, 
one pressure, and as the conversion of the gases is taking place, or as the as you're doing the conversion, the gases are all going to be at the same temperature and pressure. Um, so constant conditions. Under those conditions, what you can do is you can take a shortcut. Instead of going from liters to moles, and then from moles to moles, and then from moles to liters, so into the mole, mole to mole, out of the mole, you can actually take a shortcut, go straight from liters to liters, and cut out the mole. And the reason why is just because the nature of solving the problem, you would be doing the same conversion factor, and then you would be taking the inverse of the conversion factor to get back to liters if you went through that route. If, you're, if your conditions are the same, the, the, print, the pressure and the temperature. So basically all of those conversions would cancel themselves out, therefore you really don't need them. Um, so you're going to use something to solve the problem. You're going to go from liters of one gas directly to liters of a different gas, so liters of A to B, for instance, without going through anything else. It's called, and the, the ratio you're going to use to solve it is something called a volume-volume ratio. Instead of a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, you're going from volume of one gas to volume of another. Where does this ratio come from? It comes from the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation. So remember, for instance, it, like for this problem down here, we've got one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen yields two moles of ammonia. Um, right, right here I've just written the coefficients. Normally we said that indeed those coefficients do mean the moles of each gas, but for these problems when you're going from liters of one gas to liters of another, you're going to assume that those coefficients are the volumes of gas in liters. So let's do a problem to kind of see how, what I'm talking about and how we're going to solve. The first problem here says calculate the volume of nitrogen. So we want to know how many liters of nitrogen gas here are needed to react with 9 liters of hydrogen gas at 450 Kelvin and 5 atmospheres. So here we're given a temperature and here we're given a pressure. Notice we're not at STP. But notice what we are given. We're given the volume of one gas, and we're asked to calculate the volume of another gas. And we only have one set of temperature and pressure conditions. We are going to do a volume-volume conversion. So let's work it out. We're going to start with what we're given. We're given 9.0 liters of hydrogen gas. For every three liters of hydrogen gas, one liter of nitrogen gas is, is consumed as well. So I'm going to put my three liters of hydrogen gas on bottom. This is liters of hydrogen gas on bottom, and on top it will cancel. And I put my one liter of nitrogen gas on top. This is the volume-volume conversion factor. It's similar exactly to a mole-to-mole -mole conversion, only we're using liters with the coefficients instead. So I've c converted from hydrogen, so I've got hydrogen on top and bottom, I'm canceling it, and I'm converting two liters of nitrogen. Okay, so basically I've got nine divided by three here, don't I? I don't need a calculator for that. We end up calculating that we'll need three liters of nitrogen. Now that is simple, isn't it? If you're given the liters of one gas, and you're asked to calculate the liters of another gas, if you only have one set of conditions, then you can go straight from liters of one to the other without going through the mole. It's a shortcut. Only time you can do that. Let's do the last problem here. It says, what volume of sulfur dioxide, so how many liters of SO2, will react when 12 liters of oxygen gas, so we've got 12 liters of oxygen, is consumed at constant temperature and pressure? Here we're not even given the temperature and pressure, but we do know that the conditions remain constant. So if we're given the liters of one gas and we're asked to calculate the liters of another, if we have constant conditions from gas to gas, then we can just use the volume-volume conversion. So we set it up. We're given 12.0 liters of oxygen. We're going to use our volume-volume conversion. So for every, according to the balanced chemical equation here, for every one liter of oxygen, 
on bottom so that those cancel. We are going to use two liters of sulfur dioxide. Okay, so I've got 12 times two, right? We will need 24.0 liters of SO2. That is a simple volume to volume conversion. Now here's the thing, I want you to really practice the gastrogeometry because I find that students in general, if they've studied, they practice the ideal gas law, the combined gas laws, the individual gas laws. They're pretty strong at those if they've, they've put in quite a lot of work. But as you get to the end of chapter 12, sometimes people's um, understanding of the material starts to fizzle a little. And I don't think that they necessarily don't understand the material. Maybe they just haven't spent enough time with the stoichiometry because there are so many other problems that use the equations. So I'm going to challenge you to just try all of the stoichiometry problems that you can find because it's the last part of the chapter and you know for plug and chugs there were a lot of those but I want you to work as many of these as possible so you can get a lot of practice in stoichiometry remind yourself of the type of stoichiometry we've been doing and add the molar volume and volume volume calculations to your repertoire so you can do everything. All right, um, so this was the last video in the chapter and just practice, 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 right? Okay, have a good week.